know my bit popping days are over. I hung my boots up and then retired from the disco floor. The center of my soul called me in is the space between your bed and wardrobe with the Louvre doors. Have you read the captain's report, Dad? Have you read it? B, we are sitting down to eat. It's Wednesday, February 2nd. Six weeks ago, my mother, Bernadette Fox, disappeared. And sometimes I think Dad would rather think that she was dead than go to the trouble of looking for her. B, sit down. No, what happens when Mom comes home and finds out you're eating dinner with people she hated? Oh, la la la. If that happens, then she'll be the one with the explaining to do. You! Nat! You just wish she were dead so you could marry Dad and take his money. Oh, I'm sorry, Sulin. She's just grieving. I'm grieving what a jerk you are. And how you've fallen under the spell of Yoko Ono. <laughs> Look, the captain's report. It says, Mom's last recorded activity occurred on January 4th and 5th. Both charges for refreshments in the Shackleton Lounge. 4th January, four pink penguins. 5th January, two bottles of wine. She went on the morning excursion and returned safely to the ship. What does that tell you? That she was drinking heavily. Oh, no, no. It tells us where and when Mom got off the boat. We know which day she left. So, we find the closest port and bingo! B. Be... Why are we out there looking for her? Elgie, I think maybe B needs to take a time out. Shut up, Yoko. Just keep stuffing your face. Sulin, <laughs> are you okay? No. Oh, she doesn't know you're pregnant. I'm sorry about being, I'm sorry about Bernadette. And I'm sorry about the baby. Oh, you're sorry about the baby. No, 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 that's not what I meant. <laughs> it's just all so sudden. It's only sudden to you because Bernadette had all those miscarriages. When you're a healthy woman like me and you make love to a man, you get pregnant. <laughs> I'm going to Antarctica with B. You know I can't travel. It's just going to be me <laughs> and B. The last trip the season leaves in two days, I am sorry. B needs me. She needs closure. You've reached the voicemail of Warren and Audrey Griffin. I'm afraid no one's home right now, but if you leave a message after the tone, we'll get right back to you. Warren, darling, when you get this, can you check everything? Answering machine, mail, email, for anything from Bernadette? Yes, Bernadette Fox. I want to tell you everything that's been going on. I found out that, that Elgin Branch was planning to have Bernadette committed to Madrona Hill because he believed it to be a danger to herself and others. His evidence? That she had run over my foot and destroyed our home. My sworn enemy was being sent away to a mental institution. The old Audrey might have seen this as a cause for celebration, but instead, everything fell away with the truth. Bernadette never ran over my foot. I faked the whole thing. And the mudslide? Bernadette removed the blackberries exactly as I had asked her to do. My lies would be responsible for a mother being locked up. Tell me, God, I said. Tell me what to do. And then, an incredible calm came over me. I made a copy of every document I had and put them in a file. I found Kyle playing video games and asked him if he could get into Su Lin's work email. He grunted and sloped off to his room to get his laptop. But within five minutes, I was looking at Su Lin's email account. In another five, I was looking at Elgin's. I discovered the plan for an intervention. The next morning, when I knew the psychiatrist would be at Bernadette's house, I headed straight there. There was a police car in the driveway, so I climbed through the hole in the fence. I could see Bernadette's silhouette in the bathroom window. And there, lying across the lawn, was a ladder, as if God had placed it there. I started to climb. Oh. Bernadette! Oh, Bernadette! Uh, Audrey? You have to come 
with me now. Uh, okay. Let's go to my house. What, why are you doing this? Because I'm a Christian, and I've got something to give you. Kevin, see anything? Come on, run! Through the hole! I can't take all this in. You don't have to read it all now. It's too much. Please see that B gets this. I know it's a lot, but she can handle it. I'd rather ruin her with the truth than ruin her with lies. She won't be ruined. Is he screwing her, Audrey? The admin? Zulin? Hard to say. And that was the last I saw of Bernadette. I sent the envelope of documents to be at Choate. No letter. No return address. Personally, I found the concept of closure totally offensive. Because it would mean I was trying to forget about Mom. Really, I was going to Antarctica to find her. We boarded the Allegra in Ushuaia, Argentina. And no sooner had welcoming cocktails been announced in the Shackleton Lounge than I got to work. My plan was to follow in Mom's footsteps because I knew something would jump out, some kind of clue that nobody but me would notice. According to the captain's report, the first thing Mom did was charge $433 at the gift shop a few hours after she got on board. Hello? Are you open? Good morning. How can I help you today? Oh. Oh. oh, is it always this bad? It's pretty rough. We're getting 30-foot swells. Were you here for Christmas? Yes, I was. There was a woman. She bought a bunch of stuff from the gift shop December 26th in the evening. Could you look up the details? Um... B, oh, here you are. Is this your dad? What are you up to? I'm just trying to find Mom. Okay. Can we talk about this? Outside? What's that? It's the captain's report. It's going to help me find Mom. She's somewhere out there waiting for me, Dad. And you're acting like she's dead. Where is she hiding them, Be On an iceberg? Floating on a raft? What's she been eating? How's she keeping warm? That's why I wanted the receipt from the gift shop to prove that she bought warm clothes. They sell parkas and boots and hats. They sell granola bars. Granola bars? That's what this is based on? Parkers and granola bars? Have you been outside yet? No. Right. Ow! You're coming with me then. Yeah. Feel that? We're not even in Antarctica yet. Do you feel how cold it is? Do you? Okay. Okay. Wait, take it. This captain's report, the only truth here is that mom was safely on board January 5th and then she started drinking. But you're looking for facts. Feel this. This wind, this cold, these are the facts. I won't let you do this, B. It's not good for you. Constantly searching for something that isn't there. No! It's all I have! It's not all you have. You have me, B. You have me. Yeah, I hate you! Good morning. We got our first glimpse of land at 623, and we're now making our way into Deception Bay. Welcome to Antarctica. I yank the cord on the shades, and there it is. A black, rocky island with snow on top, black water under it, and a big, gray sky above. B, darling. Oh, I'm glad you're up. How about a swim? A swim? It's a volcanic island. There's a hot spring. No, it's okay. You go, Dad. Okay. I try to love Dad and not hate him for his fake cheer. I try to imagine what Mom saw in him back when she was an architect, or even when we were all living in Seattle, before she disappeared. I have a feeling you're going to change your mind. I won't. 
While Dad's out on his daily expeditions, I stay on the ship. I spend my time in the library, mostly, or in the chart room, studying the map of my mom's journey and comparing it to ours. Ladies and gentlemen, today's expedition is to Port Lockroy and the Antarctic Heritage Museum, where people live and run a gift shop and a post office. Where people live? Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god, oh my god. Port Lockroy. Port Lockroy. I checked the map, and sure enough, Mom's ship had stopped here. I knew Dad had signed up for the early trip, so I head down to the mudroom to find a Zodiac. Okay, ladies and gents, here we are. Welcome, Welcome to, to Port Lockroy. Lockroy. Would you like to look around the gift shop? You sure have a, a lot of penguin-related gifts. Uh, welcome to Port Lockroy. Welcome to Port Lockroy. Good where, where is everybody who lives here? You're looking at them. I'm Vivian. And I'm Iris. Welcome to Port Lockroy. I don't under understand. Where, where do you live, live? Now that you're all gathered, uh, we'll begin our talk. In 1996, the UK Antarctic Heritage Trust paid to turn Port Lockroy into a living museum. During the war, Port Lockroy was home to Operation... Where do you sleep? Here. We roll our sleeping bags out in the gift shop. Oh, so it really is just the two of you. Mm. Nobody else, nobody like mm -mm. gotten off one of the ships to live with you. Well, no, how could they? Oh. What's the matter? Has something happened? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Excuse me. Oh, Excuse me, please. I think you have a monopoly on missing her. <laughs> but Mom was my, my best friend. She was my best friend. I knew her longer. <laughs> no. It's going to be okay, Dad. <laughs> oh, it all started with that phone call to Dr. Kurtz. I was only trying to get Mom help. I know. You're great, B. You've always been great. You're our biggest accomplishment. It's okay. She wouldn't leave me, Dad. She just wouldn't. I know. I know. Come but even I was starting to doubt the truth of that. Tomorrow, in the final episode, B and Elgin make a breakthrough in their search for the missing Bernadette in the forbidding Antarctica.